television what is best in life. Watch television, melt your brain, waste your life away. Yes, it is good. But is it always good? Ah, the boob tube. Many an hour I have spent wasting away before its glowing, flickering splendor. But sometimes, only sometimes, television might not be all that great. Today, the lamest TV shows of all time get deep fat fried. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Deep Fat Fried. How you doing today? How you doing, Scotty? What? How you doing, Paul? I'm doing okay. Thanks for asking. How you doing, TJ? Scotty? Uh, 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 like. Uh, How you doing? Paul? You told me this wouldn't be. It's dead air with Scotty. An episode. You saw us. You just saw What is it gonna be? What is it gonna be? What are you gonna? What the fuck? What the fuck? Sell you? What the fuck? You told me. What? You told what? me we were gonna play Candyland. Dude, have you seen what they did to Candyland? What did they do to no. Candyland? Have you seen what, what they've they do? fucking done to what Candyland? What did they do to Candyland? Made it better? Ooh. No, hold on. Did they fuck up Candyland? Don't show I'm me this, up man. Candyland, dude. You know I'm better in a good mood, DJ. And I'm in a good mood right now, and you're going to fuck me up. Let me see if I can up. find this shit. Let me see if I can find this shit. So hold on. I'm just going to look. Okay, so here. Uh, yeah, that's the this old is candy. Like, I can tell from here. So, you know, this is like super old school Candyland. Right. This is like... This is that's, more like the version I think I grew yeah, up playing. More yeah, like that's my era of Candyland there. Well, wait. No, I don't see the Licorice Whip guy. So, oh, yeah, there he is. Yeah, yeah this is the version there. I grew up with. Yeah, 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 yeah here he is right there. This is the version I grew up with, too. With the, look, it's got this, the 90s version. It's got this nice long winding path and shit, and you yeah, got to yeah. fucking go through Candyland and get to the fucking thing. Yeah. So, I spelled Candyland totally wrong. How do you misspell Candyland? I don't know how I done it, but check this, check this fucking shit out. Let me see if I can find the fucking new board that they fucking have for this shit because it's fucking obscene. Is that it? This is even worse. It's even worse than no, no. It's worse than that. I've seen the the fucking new one. It's like they got like barely any fucking spaces. God, where the fuck is current goddamn Candyland? No one even wants to take a picture of it because it fucking sucks. It's like modern. Yeah, is it yeah. that one on the right? Uh-oh. Hold up. I'll find oh, it. I'm on Yeah, they've got pictures. all the pictures of the old cool candy land. Is, yeah, is that's it. No, that's not it. What? That's just okay. some fucking ripoff. That better oh, not be it. It's like fucking, I don't know. I can't even find a picture of it, but it's like, it's basically, sure? it basically is like this, though. Like, it, oh, they basically, like. Go back to what? that one with the pink gingerbread house. Uh, on all the way on the right of your screen, Fun Venture, Gar yeah, that. I think I might have played this Candyland at some point as well. Wow, that's old school Candyland. Yeah, dude. I like had my mom had a really school. old Candyland board. Dude, and the point is though, newer one because I know I played the one with the licorice whip guy too, but I remember that one as well. The point yeah, is though, the they've, been, they've like even though Candyland was already like a very simple game they've like nerfed it to where like it now caters to like the super short attention spans you motherfuckers got like 
half the spaces now. What? Game of Candyland don't even last no more. Man, that's messed Bullshit. up. Bullshit. That's muffed up, dude. That's muffed. I can't even find a picture of the fucking board. That's how fucking... They no one even wants to take a picture Candyland. of it. They muffed up Candyland. They've, they've muffed up... We're about to find out about how badly they've muffed up TV. Why do, why do people ruin everything cool? I don't know. I, I mean, look, I love these lamest episodes because I just like to remind people how much shit in the world... Because we, we always focus on what's really good or what's really bad, but we never focus on what's just pure lameness, like the lame shit that's, that pops up and we're like, what the fuck? And then it goes away and it's forgotten, consigned to the realm of obscurity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Shit like, uh, I don't know, say, Cop Rock? <laughs> I remember what? Cop Rock. Okay, so I've never heard of this. Cop you remember, Rock, yeah. You remember Cop the, Rock, Paul? I, I briefly remember Cop Rock being a thing. It was a, a musical cop drama, if I'm not mistaken. Where, Are you serious? Yeah, like the cops would bust into song and shit, and the criminals like would... like a terrible idea, though. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> it's it's it, it, it didn't... It didn't it's like last CSI, long. Like, it, it, so, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Swanson, did you Dude. kill him? <laughs> and then, and then, and then we musical found number, traces like, of semen. <laughs> we found traces of <laughs> semen <laughs> on the corpse. <laughs> on the corpse. There's a trace of semen on the corpse. <laughs> oh, God. Get the black light, because I think there's some jizz on this mattress. You know, like, yep. It's going to be awesome, dude. No, it wasn't. Uh, I can't believe, like, I, I, when, I, when you told me what this episode was, I was like, great. It's going to be a bunch yeah. of shit I don't know. And I know the first one already. You're going to know yeah. them all, Paul. You're going to know them all. Cop Rock was um, horrible. Uh, uh, yeah. When did it come out? Cop Rock. I guess in the 80s. Cop Rock is a police television series that combines the drama of Law & Order with the musical stylings of Grease. That's the pitch. What? No, That's... fuck no, dude. No, fuck. <laughs> Eject. Uh, the series centered around the LAPD and mixed music and choreography throughout the show's various episodes. For example, a scene in the pilot episode had a jury breaking out in a song proclaiming the defendant guilty in gospel style. The show was, critic was a critical and commercial failure and was canceled by ABC after only 11 episodes from September 26th to December 26th, 1990. Mm. I was close. Right yep. now, it was right in that line. Is that fucking goddamn... Randy Newman or whatever. That's the fuck. Randy Newman, yes. Oh man. Got a friend, Jimmy. <laughs> in the sunshine, in the rain. It's time for cop rock once again. <laughs> I, really to, I really, really love to hear Randy Newman do a motorhead song. I don't know why. I just really would. <laughs> if I knew a motorhead song, I could try and approximate it, but I don't know uh, that just, I just you heard of, you never heard of Ace of Spades? I've heard the Ace of Spades. I just don't know the words enough. Just say Ace it. of Spades like Randy Newman. That that's all you gotta do. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the only thing in the song. He Why sings Randy Newman. He, he sings oh, like fucking Bob. Head. He sings like Bob Dylan with Down syndrome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Episode canceled. Yeah, you just got us canceled. I occasionally will like a Randy Newman song, so whatever. I will give him shit, but like, I don't know. Every once in a while, I'll be like, eh, okay. Skip a little ahead there. Okay, so it's just it's, this is the it just goes on like, and on. When, when this is the intro to your song, it's just Randy Newman droning on with no variety. <laughs> Randy Newman, Ace of Spades. You know, it's, it's never gonna fucking. It's never gonna be good. Okay, so uh, you might want to watch a uh, 
a segment from this shit. Uh, here's, I guess, 45 seconds in. They're going to sing, maybe. Let's see. You know you want to lose in gambling for fools. But I... How's, how's it go? I don't know. I like taking I chances, know. baby. I don't want to live forever. Ace of spades. Ace of spades. <laughs> <laughs> the I told only you, dude. god in me is the ace of spades. <laughs> Randy Newman needs to make a right, movie. Just, just come, all right. album. Randy Newman, before you die, you got to fucking you, cover, you gotta cover it. it. Like, dude, Randy Newman, if you're watching this, and I know you are, <laughs> ace of spades cover. It's your fucking <laughs> ticket back to the top, Randy. All right, let's listen to this. Male cock, 6'3". Male cock? Male six, three. cock. That's a big cock. Look for tattoos in unusual places. Oh, shit. Like under the nuts? Okay, that's it. And hey. hey. Oh, no. Let's be careful out there. <laughs> what were you expecting? <laughs> I don't know. What were you I expecting? I don't know. I straight up told you that the cops bust into song at random moments, and then the, cro the crooks did it, too. But it's okay. What well, I'm not even laughing because he's broken the song. That alone is funny, but I was prepared for that. What I wasn't prepared for is how lame the subject of the song was going to be. Be careful. I thought it would be like I thought it would be something like some dramatic moment, you know, it's like the killer came in through the door, you know. But no, it's like let's be careful out there. Be sure to watch your back. Cause the streets is dangerous. Let's see where it goes. On the wrong side of the track. Let's be careful out there. Oh shit, it's about to rock. We had a 187 at the 7 11 on the corner of 4th and Main. Two Caucasians of the mail persuasion. All right, you know, I don't. The I don't. extras in the scene came and keep it together, dude. There's people like they're literally doing shots of like people turning their heads away from being filmed because they're trying not to laugh. Like, it's like I don't want no one to it's be so seen. ridiculous. Yeah, like how, like why, why are all the shots of the police officers listening to this so bored and unengaged and shit? Like I don't understand. I think, I think we know the answer to that. Well, I mean, yeah, but they're actors, though. You know, like we're supposed to look <laughs> like that. Watching this, they're not, they're supposed to look like they're actually they're into it. Like there should be yeah. at least one of them snapping their fingers along or some shit. I mean, no, I, I remember uh, I was about ten or something when this show came out, somewhere there thereabouts. And I remember yeah, you were you were ten. I remember my 80, right? mom oh, yeah. wanted to watch it, and I remember we watched like two episodes of it. And that was the last I heard of the show. Back when I was ten, yeah, I didn't hear I didn't hear of shows getting canceled and shit. Like that wasn't just something that was in my fucking wheelhouse yet. So, I, I all I thought I thought it was a special that came on TV or something that only had an episode or two and then then went away. I mean, almost. Do you remember? Do you remember your mom's reaction to the show? She was bored as fuck. <laughs> okay, good. Like she was <laughs> so, really I bored. So. I remember her. I remember her just like at, after the second episode, just never mentioning it again. Which like, <laughs> that's what my mom does when she's bored with something. You know what I mean? She just doesn't bring it up again. So she was I can't very blame bored. Her at all. And I don't know why she was bored because this is like, I'm riveted by what we've seen so far. <sighs> Let's take a look at some more beautiful thing. Actually, uh, no, not no more of this. Fucking we, beautiful, fucking. Thing. We can move on. We got enough shows. We don't no, need to fucking. No, you can't fucking skip rock over forever. fucking cop rock, TJ. You got to give people ten more seconds. Uh. Oh my go. god! This is some great camera work that you paused on, by the way. Anytime you have a fuzzy subject walking through the camera in the middle of a shot, it's always great. What the fuck is that? The ugliest girl in town. Oh man, 
Is this trans blackface? The Ugliest Girl in Town was a sitcom produced by ABC from September 26, 1968 to January 30th, 1969. Timothy Blair, a Hollywood talent agent, falls in love with Julie Renfield, a British actress visiting the USA to film a movie. After the movie is finished, Julie returns to England. To help his brother, Gene, Timothy dresses as a hippie and poses for a photo shoot. The photos are sent to a modeling agency in England who assumes Timothy is a woman, offering her a job. Now Timothy travels to England as Timmy, spelled a little differently, with spelled like T-I-M-M-I-E, posing as a woman in order to get close to Julie. When his brother Gene loses 11,000 pounds gambling, the brothers are trapped in England and Timothy must remain Timmy e in order to make money modeling and not blow his cover. This uh, sounds that's like the most convoluted premise for a show I've <laughs> yeah, ever heard. So co- yeah, you literally, it literally takes like what is a, the premise of this a show? minute, a minute the, and a half to explain. The premise of this show is that a guy falls in love with a girl in Great Britain and then poses for a picture dressed as a hippie and then the people in great britain see the picture of him dressed as a hippie and they think he's a chicky and so in order to get next to the girl that he's in love with he pretends to be a woman in great britain but then his brother gets in financial trouble and so now he has to remain a woman in order to help dig out of the trouble what a wacky easy to understand <laughs> <laughs> really accessible premise for a show. It, I'm, be honest with you, I'm honestly pretty surprised that you remembered the entire yeah. stupid plot after uh, just. Oh, I was paying reading, attention because job, I wanted to know if you were doing like a description of the first episode or an actual the premise of the show, and you were doing the premise of the show. <laughs> yeah, that's the premise of the show. It takes that long. Ridiculous. Hey, if you have a TV show and it cannot, and the premise of it cannot be explained in a sentence, like even a complex show like Breaking Bad, it could be like. Uh, a high school chemistry teacher gets cancer, and so he starts cooking meth. Right. Cheers. A bunch of crazy characters meet at their local bar and all the shenanigans surrounding it. You know, uh, right. fucking taxi uh, centering around a taxi stand filled with eccentrics and their day-to-day interactions as they go about their work. I mean, uh, hell, even, Mash, even Game, Game you know of Thrones, I mean? just all, for fuck's sake. I'm I mean, trying like, to think obviously. of all the good, like Star Trek even, which is an incredibly complex yeah. show. Mankind in the future explores the cosmos encountering alien species. Yeah, right. So every show, every good show, even complicated shows, they have a, you can easily explain their premise. The premise of this show, let me see if I can even do it in a fucking sentence. A guy has to dress as a chick in Britain because his brother had financial trouble there and he's trying to sedu- I can't, you can't no, even do it. You can't do you it. You can't fucking do it. This is well, a terrible idea for a fucking show. a lot show. of like, bad movies and shows. Like if you like have to go like, okay, and then you gotta understand this thing, you gotta understand this thing. It's like, it, when there's all these like expo- almost expository things that have to be explained for the show let's to even see, make sense. Yeah, let's, see the, let's see if the, let's see if the, let's see if the intro explains it. Tell me, okay. you guys, let's see, see. Hold on. You guys just. Hi, my name is Tim Blair. I used to be a nice, normal, clean cut American kid. And then I met Julie Renfield, a young British actress visiting Hollywood. She turned my whole world upside down. The premise of the show is so convoluted that they literally have to explain it all in this opening credit. <laughs> this, That's this so intro. fucking sad. But when the movie she was making ended and she returned to London, I was yeah, we know this. I just, I just went over this. <laughs> so just watch this. About ready to die. To forget my broken heart. Okay, so yeah, then they explain the whole show. And then they break into this song. Dude, can I say something? Now this is, I will, I will tell you, this is particularly lame. But the 60s and TV... In particular, in the 60s and early 70s and shit was a kind of like everything was kind of like this. There were all these like really ludicrous premises for shows and these like they hadn't really figured out how to do a modern TV show yet. And so they were trying to be like wacky and hip and cool and with it. But looking back on it, 
I can't I can't imagine anybody thought that it was. Maybe they did. They also didn't put the same level of budget into TV as they do now. Like oh, a lot of shows not. where it was like it was like okay, the budget like people don't realize like a lot of shows back in the day the budget was like five hundred dollars or something or like fifty dollars or a hundred dollars. We're talking a tiny amount of money to produce an entire show like this. So more than likely this show did not have a high budget. So it's like you, that's why you get a lot of these like weird cooked up premises because the people involved in the show might have really written the show. Like, oh, okay, let's spitball a show real quick. Uh, a guy has to he falls in love with a British girl because we got to work with, and the, we have London, we have this. Like, we got to make all these elements somehow work and fit into a show. And that's kind of what it sounds like had, ended up happening with the show. I mean, you, there, there's really just too much going on in the fucking premise of the show. The name of the show yeah. doesn't even make sense because according to the premise, as I understand it, a British modeling agency thinks he's hot and wants to work with him constantly. And so why is he the ugliest girl in town? If, he, if he's clearly the most beautiful girl in town, if he's in demand by every model agency in town, right? I, yeah. I don't know, Paul. You would I really that, don't know. <laughs> that does follow. It's like if a bunch of modeling agencies want you to model for them, aren't you viewed as attractive, not ugly? It's like, oh, yeah. look at this ugly model. The let's hottest get a bitch little, in Britain. Uh, That's what we should – that, that should have been called. Let's get a little taste of, like, what the show is like, okay? Okay. So uh, here's a little clip. We're gonna play this is the premiere episode. Thank you very much, Boris. Well, Timmy, this is where you'll be staying. Oh, it's lovely. Which apartment? Oh, Timmy, really, apartment. The entire house, of course. As I said, when David Courtney does something, he does it in style. I know it's a big investment, but as you Americans always say, nothing venture, nothing game. <laughs> yeah, we say that all the time. I'm sure you do. <laughs> well, come along, Timmy. Let's be inside, shall we? What was the, uh... What was the yeah, joke have there? Have done this in a movie show, where yeah, somebody no. somebody lines up two guns to their own head and then shoots them at simultaneously so that the bullets hit right in the middle and come right out the front of the forehead? That'd be kind of a cool shot. Yeah. I don't know why oh, I yeah. thought of that while watching that little 30-second <laughs> blurb of the show, but... I do. Let's, look, it's, let's take another little one more dip. Are we Well, Jimmy, do you like it? Cry God for Harry, England, and St. George! Well, let us never speak of this again. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want, like, two agents to knock on my door and, like, with, and right. be, like, the men in black and, like, erase my memory of this show. Because that joke, I, I just, no. No, I don't like anything about this show. I don't like the premise. I don't like the actors. I don't like well, anything you know about what? it. This is the erase guys, from history. And it pretty much has guys... been. So, t uh, no, TJ, I got to tell you something, dude. Oh, yeah. You were a piece of shit for bringing this up, dude. This thing had probably uh, pretty much died in the zeitgeist. So, like, there's like a little, a uh, little, and you just brought it back, TJ. You are actually are a fucking monster, dude. You are right, a piece well, you of know shit. What? You know what? I'm going to apologize to you guys. I'm going to apologize in the form of Manimal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's another one that I remember very briefly <laughs> in the 80s. There was a show about a dude what could turn into a panther. Manimal, manimal. He's coming <laughs> to face, fucking dude. crush your skull. Manimal. The end is just like a panther. Yeah, the, the, third, the third one is really the funniest one. Yeah, that's the best one, dude. That makes it. <laughs> Okay, so Manimal. I'm Manimal. guessing the premise of this one is this guy somehow gets is he is it magical powers? What's the premise? Manimal. I can't remember is what the goddamn premise of this thing is. I do know that this is where furrydom probably started, though. Manimal is an action adventure TV series that ran on NBC from September 30th to December 17th, 1983, and lasted eight episodes. The that show makes... centers around Dr. Jonathan Chase, a shape shifting man who can turn himself into any animal he chooses. He uses his ability to solve mysteries and help the police solve crimes. While Dr. Chase can transform into any animal on the planet, for some reason he turns into a panther and a, or a hawk in every episode. He also transforms into a horse, dolphin, bear, and snake once. Um, notable guests. 
Notable guest I'll, I'll stars go. include James Hong, Robert O'Reilly, and Robert England. So uh, here you go. I was going to say, why can't I transform into an actually good fucking show? <laughs> what that? What are you talking about? This show's great. Check it out. Wow. I mean, this intro is pretty fucking dope. I'm not going to yeah, lie I'm, to you. I am great. All right. You know, I, 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 I respect this. fucking thing. awesome. Like, everybody <laughs> must have been on coke or acid or both or something in the 80s because all these intros are fucking dope, man. I respect this intro enough to full screen it. Let's do it. Yeah. Hell fucking yeah. That's how you do an intro right here. Guys, we've been talking about doing a new DFF intro. I think we should steal the Manimal intro, dude. <laughs> dude, it's pretty dope. We should each turn into Manimals, dude. <laughs> Oh, look at the transition. Holy shit. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> dude, he's the fucking horse he's riding on? Okay, that's pretty cool. I, I'm sold on this shit. I know what? Never mind, dude. Dude, Manimal, Manimal is... Uh, I'm I know this now. I know this is, the lamest, this is the lamest shit, and maybe the show itself is lame, but this intro is pretty fucking dope. This intro rocks. It's fucking awesome. I love the fucking music. I love the crazy phonetic pace. You don't see this kind of pacing anymore. Manimal. Hell fucking yeah. yeah. All right, so Manimal. Long, Manimal. No, of course, the Manimal. show totally delivered on intro right tj well let's see okay so here's a pa here's a panther transformation sequence from manimal so let's see how they do it is wait i'm kind of confused <laughs> it's just like every no, cat what? standing He's at the around zoo. is he okay damn Shit. It's pretty cool. Did you gotta respect it? Dude, I gotta say, uh, the transformation for like a TV 1983 television transformation is pretty fucking cool. Yeah. It is. So far, yeah. It's a bad chroma key there. But. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it gets lamer the closer to a panther he gets, I'll be honest. Yes. I think they could have, like, maybe cut this down a little. They okay. probably could have had a cooler one. Like a little Should highlight reel of this well. would have been enough. Almost in this exact same time period, 1982, is Conan the Barbarian, where Thulsa Doom becomes the snake. Because they, cause they yeah. don't do this, this like, kind was, of, like, up. That was a movie, though. That was a movie, but I'm saying, but like, it also didn't like didn't linger on like, oh, let's show like like that movie was like, okay, a few transitional forms, then a snake. This one should have done the same thing. Like, he looked really cool, and if the next shot had been him, like pretty much as a panther, then it would have worked. But this is like just they're doing this kind of like really stop motiony thing where it's like his face is getting larger, and then the teeth are coming down. So they're showing too much, in my opinion. I don't know, dude. I appreciate the practical effects work that went into it. It's way too fucking long, but yeah, I mean, a it lot just of fucking a, I, work went into making this transition. You know what I mean? Just need a few little. Snips. I mean, I, I, yeah, I recognize that, but I still, I don't think it's that great. What well, the beginning part is? Oh no! 
he's getting lumpier. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I mean, I appreciate, I mean, like I said, I mean, you know, you know. What are they going to do, you know? They got a budget. I just feel like at this point, we should be looking at a real panther, you know? Not Probably. Yeah, we'll whatever this is. <laughs> They're like one board. It's especially bad when you have all these real cats to compare it to, too. All there right, you go. See? see, they should have just cut to that at one point. I don't know. Um, let's, you want to watch the hawk transformation sequence? We can do that. I mean, yeah, yeah cool. it's worth checking out. Let's see if it's as good as that. <laughs> okay, he looks... It's, it's quicker, so... All right, yeah, speed it up. Good. It's like they figured it out. Oh, my God. That was nightmare fuel. So I think these ah. animals are just like I think these I think these animals they keep cutting to are just in his head. Like he's just envisioning it to fucking do the transformation or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, that guy looks like a freaking out, dude. So compared to better. compared to Cop Rock and uh, Ugliest Girl in Town, Manimal is pretty fucking dope. Yeah, I'd watch a couple like the, episodes of Manimal. I feel like the fact that they actually did these like long, um, you know, special effects shot with these practical effects. Now, while they don't all work, you could tell that there was actually some love and like craftsmanship put into it. So I can't really hate on Manimal too much. I mean, for a limited budget. You know what I mean? They 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 really went for it with that transformation. They could have cheaped out on it in a number of fucking ways in the eighties, and they didn't. You know, they built a bunch of prosthetics and makeup I mean, shit. And... Just just watch how fucking like Odo transforms into shit in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. It's way lamer than what they do in Manimal. So. Yeah, that's true. Like they just kind of like have him just be like they turn him into some CG liquid that looks horrible for a second, and then all of a sudden he's like, I'm a hawk. Ah, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, even by the '90s, they really—I mean, shit. There's shows that are have horrible CGI now, so sure. it just depends. I mean, like, but practical effects—you at least have the feeling of it being there, so you gotta give them credit. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the what now? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> What the fuck is this? <laughs> no. Get, okay, next. Whoa. <laughs> next. No. <laughs> nope, nope. Not going to listen to the pitch for this show next. See, I'm a good TV executive. Like, I would know. Like, if somebody <laughs> came to me with a pitch and they were like, listen, got our next big hit show. All right, lay it on me, kid. It's called The Secret Diary of Desmond Pfeiffer. I'd be like, rejected. Next. <laughs> 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 the Secret Diary of Desmond Pfeiffer is an American sitcom that aired on UPN from October 5th to 28th, 1998, and lasted nine episodes with only five episodes actually airing. Oof. The, show, the show revolves around a black English nobleman named Desmond Pfeiffer, uh, played by Chi McBride, who was chased out of the United Kingdom due to gambling debts and being promiscuous with various British royals. He ends up becoming President Abraham Lincoln's friend and valet. Lincoln is played by Dan Florick, better known as Captain Cragen on Law and Order SVU. Uh, Desmond serves as the intelligent straight man in the chaotic White House filled with fools and drunkards. Misadventures that Desmond and Lincoln went through include Lincoln engaging in telegraph sex, the duo being trapped behind Confederate lines, and Lincoln having to dress in drag to escape. Mary Lincoln hiring a body double of, double of Abe that she wants to have sex with, et cetera. Et cetera. Excuse me. You're right there. I'm sorry. This show's giving me yeah. indigestion. Oh, you got a little heartburn going on. I'm sorry. You all right, TJ? Yeah. You, you, got, like, you, uh, uh, you got the bean burps or what? I don't know. You ever have a, a burp? You ever have a burp, but when you try to make it come up, it just like is just totally stuck, like deep within. Uh, just, like, yeah. And all that comes up, baby, TJ. all that's coming up is this little, these little squirts of liquid, and it's just like, 
that's gross. That's gross. That's gross. Anyway, maybe I should read that paragraph again. <laughs> Desmond serves as the intelligent straight man in the chaotic White House filled with fools and drunkards. Misadventures that Desmond and Lincoln went through include Lincoln engaging in telegraph sex, the duo being trapped behind Confederate lines, and Lincoln, wanting, Lincoln having to dress and drag to escape. Mary Lincoln hiring a body double of Abe that she wants to have sex with, etc. Oh, Abe, oh, Abe. Oh. Uh, before the series even began, the NAACP protested against the series' release, marching and picketing at Paramount Studios. <laughs> Who they claimed that the a minute. Yes. <laughs> 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 Who picked this picture of uh, the good reverend here? There's not a better picture? That would be... Hey, he's <laughs> I think it's a pretty good picture. <laughs> he looks... Like he's about, he looks like he's walking towards a donut shop. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the NAACP claimed the show made light of slavery and sent a bad message. The studio caved and ended up canceling the series and never airing and releasing um, uh, some of the episodes. Um, here's, uh, here's the intro. The Civil War defined America, both the good and the bad. It was the crossroads of our being, and it was a hell of a crossroads. Who would have thought there was a comedy in all that? Well, we did. We were fortunate to acquire an extraordinary historical document, the secret diary of Desmond Pfeiffer. The P isn't silent. I guess you do say the P. Good to know. The P. Oh. Times of a Pfeiffer. Member of Pfeiffer. President Lincoln's staff at the height of the Civil War. Because, you know, like with Michelle Pfeiffer, she has that P, but you don't say Pfeiffer. Right. Her. But I guess you do for Desmond. Good to know. Pfeiffer, an English nobleman. So once again, any, if, you, if your fucking intro to the show has to, like, just do a dry recitation of your premise, you got a bad show. Yep. You just you do one hundred percent. Like if you find that you have to do this to make your show make any sense, you got a bad show. Sorry. So I mean, let's you can do the show and still have it be good. I mean, Star Trek: The Next Generation does it, but it does it like with style every time. Well, it's like I actually Star want to hear the intro to that space, the final frontier. Yeah, they don't, but they don't like. It's not like Star Trek doesn't be like in twenty in, in twenty three fifty one. <laughs> Yeah, well, human of course, yeah. discovered, you know, it's like they don't do that shit. Well, They're just kind of like I'm, the point I'm trying to make is it's not unheard of to put the premise in front of a show, but it's like when you need like all this explanation behind the premise, that's when you have a problem. Yeah, See, if, there's I, a... if you're a paragraph in and I'm getting bored and you're not done yet with the premise of your show, then you've got a convoluted, ridiculous premise of a show and you need to strip it down. Like there's so many shows don't even need that. Like they, they hook new people by showing the premise of the show with little clips of shows that have happened or whatever. Like, yeah. If you look at like the 90s style of TV show intro, that was basically what they did. And this looks like it was done in the nineties, right? Yes. This was yeah. from 1998. So let's take a look at some uh, clips. General Brent, may I get you breakfast? It's 11 a.m. I'm ready for lunch. How about a BLT? Very well. One bourbon, lettuce, and tomato coming up. <laughs> so, okay, wait a minute now. We, we kind of ejected out of the premise, but he's an English nobleman. Yes, but he's uh, posing as Lincoln's valet slash whatever. Confidant. Manservant slash yeah. mandingo champion yeah. or whatever the fuck. <laughs> yep. That's right. Well, General Grant, uh, you were saying something about a little problem we're having in Mississippi? Yeah, we're out of bullets. <laughs> we got by the first week saying bang, bang, but I think they're starting to catch on. Wow. Man, dude, the, the comedy team that was on the writing fucking staff for this show, uh, uh, they must have gone on to do great things. I mean, I bet their names would just pop as soon as we fucking looked up who, who was writing for this show. That joke there, man, that's a tight fucking joke. Oh, the that's so good. Existential terror on the guy's face delivery, and he's like, what has my life become? He's like looking down. It's like it literally just not even escaping him. Like when you – like. Is that these things called micro expressions? And the expression he's giving us right now, because we can freeze frame him and just kill me. Kill me, kill me, kill me. 
end my fucking miserable existence. Well, they did after five they episodes. <laughs> yeah, this is a terrible fucking concept for a show. And I don't know how it got onto an actual network at any point. It was UPN, though, so. Yeah, that's true. You know, not a great network. I mean, back the, I think we all remember that from back in the day, in the 90s, it was kind of a dumping ground. Yeah. General, we're facing grave financial difficulties. We're going to have to make severe cutbacks even here in the White House. I'll have my man Niblet do five times the work. <laughs> That's a very generous sacrifice, Desmond, but I don't think it's going to be enough. We're all behind you, sir. Everyone here at the White House will do all they can to pinch their pennies. Abe, I need $20,000 pronto. <laughs> We need twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> what is this show? Why are the characters' accents all over the place? What is going on? No, burn that show. Burn it to we're the put, ground. Never, we're putting never it behind think us. about it again. We're putting it behind us. We're we're on to my mother, the car. I I've heard about this show. one before too. <laughs> Somehow his mother's soul gets trapped in the car. And or some shit, or his mom gets turned in. I man, I've heard of this. It's like, it's like the ultimate mommy's boy show. You know, what I mean? like you know, like your mother becomes a car, then your life revolves around your car with your mom's soul in it, which is kind of weird. Your mom's a fucking like, car. Like, what if you want to fuck somebody in the back of your car? I know. It's like, sorry, mom. You know, I mean, you're you're a fucking car ghost thing, whatever. Now, so it's like, mom, mom close your sleep. Close your gas caps or whatever, because I'm about to fuck somebody in the back seat. My Mother the Car is a sitcom that ran from September 14th. What is this shit? Reload site? I don't want to reload the fucking site. Go away. My Mother the Car is a sitcom that ran from September 14th, 1965 to April 5th, 1966 on NBC and lasted 30 episodes. That's longer than most of our shit. What? Whoa, the premise, whoa, 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 whoa. yes. This lasted for 30 episodes, really. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. The Sorry. premise of the show is Dave Crabtree, played by, can you tell who this guy is related to? Dick Van Dyke. Yep. Played by Jerry Van Dyke, brother of Dick Van Dyke, is an attorney who is shopping at a used car lot for a second family car. He finds How did a I 19... know that that was a, the son of Dick Van Dyke? Ask me. I had no it, idea. Did I well, was, how do you know? It's, it's his brother. Well, yeah, but how did I know? Well, whatever. How did I know he was a Van Dyke? I mean, they do. Because bear, I They bear know, a striking family resemblance. I know you Dick know you, Van Dyke. You know your dicks. You know your dykes. I'll give it to I you. I didn't know it. God damn no it. Where's idea. my picture of Dick Van Dyke? I'm going to scroll I, through my... There he is. There he is. Oh, yeah. You can da, see da, da, da. Look at him. It's my brother. I sound just like him, too. I've been working on my... Amazing. Hey, it's me, Dick Van Dyke. Look up there. It's my brother. <laughs> so, anyway, he finds a car that has his mom's ghost in it for some fucking reason. Yeah. Um, would you want to get rid of that car? Would that car be kind of like freak you the fuck out? Like, not like, it's my mom's ghost car. I'd be like, I don't know what's no. about to happen here, but it looks like a setup for some interesting things. Uh, Dave <laughs> restores his mother at an auto shop, which brings the attention of evil Dr. Manz, uh, sorry, the evil Captain Manzini, who attempts to steal the car throughout the rest of the series. So this is the series bad guy. I want that fucking car! Dude, you know who this guy should have teamed up with? Mm. You know. You know. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's Mr. Fucking Schubert. Name? Yeah, yeah, Schubert. Schubert. Mr. Mr. Fucking, fucking Schubert, Schubert and Dr. Manzini should have been a fucking duo because oh, he's looking... Be duo. Captain Manzini. <laughs> captain, sorry, sorry. Yeah, he's a captain, come on. Respect his rank. I'm more the hell Does he want to fuck the tailpipe or something? Like, what, what's going on? He wants on to here? fuck that dude in front of him after he beats his fucking ass bloody with that whip, that horse uh, whip. Some S and M shit, huh? Yeah, yeah. It looks. This picture looks very S and M y. Um, my mother, the car intro and widescreen. Okay. Everyone knows that. And from a cat to an 
I'd rather be the alligator. So it's weird to me that like back at this time, this type of like thought, which is which is like now considered by the Christian moral majority to be like new agey and shit, was just kind of like widely accepted enough for it to be a TV show that went on and on. Yeah. It's like really. Everybody knows that when you die, you come back to something else. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> when? Yeah, your mom might come back as a fucking car. It's like, you know, okay, I, I guess. Like, it doesn't make sense, though, because, like, you're not an animal. A car is not an animal. Like, the, other, the, the premise of the song is, like, an alligator or this. Like, what, what's up? did someone come back as a fucking turd? Well, <laughs> Just hold on. Back. Listen listen to the whole fucking song. All right, well, you know? there's some rules they're going to lay out. Yeah, so you get to choose, Scotty. You know? Why not just come back as yourself, then? Because you don't want to. Come back as a fucking... You got to come back as something else. You can't as just a car? Fucking... You'd rather be in, imprisoned in an artificial constraint, which is a car that requires her son to drive her around instead of having any sort of autonomy. Like, if you're a monkey, you can at least jump around and be like his little pet monkey or something that tries to help him or his little chimp or something. Like, she's a fucking car. That's very uh, limiting. And if you get to decide, that's just a really dumb decision. So he should have been very smart. That's a well, sad way. That's a sad way said to it, come back. I never said his mom was smart, you know. I guess no, that's true. I guess not. So can I tell can I say something here? Yeah. S 60s. Or is this early 70s? 60s? This, this is the 60s. 60s. That shit that we said earlier about ha like having a show that has a premise that's so ridiculous that you have to have a long explanation for it, you don't get to dodge that by writing a shitty song and doing the same thing. Same I mean, I feel, like, I feel like you could explain this premise pretty easily. Like, a dude finds a car that has his mother's ghost in it or that is the reincarnation of his mother. You know, yeah, is she like, reincarnated? Is she a ghost? Is like, I mean, it? it's... You well, know what hippies, it is? It, like, Stupid. this whole new age thing was like, yeah, reincarnation is what happens, man. If you, if, like, everybody believed in karma for a while, you know, and if you did this, then you came back as something good. So, like... This was capitalizing on that new agey kind of new wave thing that happened in the 60s, but in also implying that everyday household appliances and shit all have people's souls in them. So I guess the toilet that I'm shitting in is somebody's fucking, you know, brother or sister or something. Thanks for your poop, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a show that actually had some uh, notoriety. I know my mom, everyone's probably heard mom, of this one. They, they showed re, uh, reruns of this show well into the 80s, and my mom yeah. was a huge fan of this show. This I've show is a, actually pretty popular. Yep, I've seen a okay. bunch of episodes of this. It's actually, believe it or not, not that bad of a show. Well, maybe it's not that bad, but you got to admit it is kind of lame. It's lame as uh, fuck. <laughs> the Flying Nun is a sitcom that aired from September 7th, 1967 and April 3rd, 19 to April 3rd, 1970 on ABC. Lasted three seasons, got 82 episodes. Uh, Sally Fields. Did she die recently or is she still alive? She's alive. She's, she's alive. Sally Fields uh, plays Sister uh, Bertrill. I think she's novice, alive. A novice nun who uh, like possesses that. the ability to fly uh, using cornet when, she, when the wind is right. Uh, adventures usually take place in San Juan, Puerto Rico, uh, where the nunnery is located. Sister Betrill uses uh, her power of flight to help people all while spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, so here we go. Here's an intro. <laughs> Dude. Yes. Fuck. Yeah, I miss the flying nun. <laughs> well, you can always go watch it. My mom loved this show. I don't know. I don't know why, but I watched a lot of this show. Coming in hot. Yeah. None coming in hot. Request to the landing. 
what the fuck nun outfit is that? Where they got like these giant fucking wings. The special up. fucking convent where flying nuns are trained, CJ. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Order of the Flying Nun. Have you ever heard of it? But she's the only one that can fly, right? It's not the flying nuns. Well, it's only no, one no. per generation, dude. There's not yeah. like a ton oh, of them. I gotcha. Alejandro Rey. What a swarthy guy, man. Look at him. Yeah. I just love his like Oops. What a what a total dream boat. Yeah, I have seen this before as well. Oh yeah. Not this like was in reruns on Nick at Night during the nineties a bunch. Because there's oh, tons right, of episodes yeah. of it. So Yeah. So if you were There's a, a little, Nick at Night kid like I was, you probably caught some episodes of The Flying Nun. Here's a little taste of it. It never snows in San Juan. Have you ever had a flying nun here before? Now, Sister Batril, the fact that you can defy one of nature's laws should not be taken as a challenge to try them all. Oh, I won't do anything conspicuous. I'll just make it snow in the convent. Sort of a mini storm. Yes, kind of. Will you help me? It would mean so much to Sister Olaf. Reverend Mother should hear of this. I know. Will you help me with that, too? <coughs> what can we lose? You know, why this, you, you, you know why this show works? I'll tell you why this show works. Other than Sister Act, when do mm -hmm. we ever get to look at what's going on with the nuns? Hmm? Sound, sound of music a little. Like sound this. of music. Okay, yeah. well, whatever. A little bit of sound of music. I mean, we could get technical with it and... There were, there's some other well, ones. You, I mean, you asked for a fucking example. I don't but know. But when do we get an in-depth... Name another one. All right, sign of music. Name another one. Oh, it's like, name another one. one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you, this is the slice of life, none day-to-day -day shit that yeah. we all wonder about. Because I know every man in this room, every man watching this, has closed his eyes at one point and said, I wonder what, what it would be like to be a woman, and I wonder what it would be like to be a woman and also a nun. Mm. Two great yeah, mysteries I've, that I men mean, cannot day, answer. You know? I always wanted I mean, to know look, what's going on back there in the nunnery, and I only get these little sneak peeks. Nunnery, Paul? There's that. I there's, think, have you got some fucked up thoughts in your head, Paul? Is what's going on here? You think it's some kinky ass fucking shits going down the nunnery? Is what you're man, saying? Man, there's, there's that 60s. movie Doubt. Yeah. There's Flying Nun. Uh huh. There's a little Sister bit in the Act. sound of music, but I think that's a stretch because just because she's a nun doesn't oh, mean. Oh no. man, there's a pretty stretch. long. Fucking she got hella extra stretch. stuff yeah. going on though. She's a nun and. I mean, sure. All the same, yeah, yeah. You know Fair enough. I mean? But there is a fucking good portion. It's not of the just like a bunch of nuns shit. chilling at the convent. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what well, I, I mean. mean not, yeah. I don't know. There you I will, go. I will grant you. I will grant you that there's not too much movies and shit made about fucking nuns. Exactly. Yeah. I'm curious. You know, the, the 60s were a strange time. They fucking obviously greenlit a lot of weird shit. 80s, I mean, seven, I mean, everything we've looked at so far has been 60s, 70s, 80s. Surely by the 2000s, shows like this were not getting greenlit anymore. They were, they were you know, they, we'd refined our sensibilities to the point where we didn't need to do that kind of lame shit no more, right? Are you fucking kidding me, TJ? 2000 is when the real cringe begins. Oh yeah. Oh okay. I, I remember this. Yeah. Yes. I I never watched it, but I remember being advertised heavily. Isn't this based on the Geico characters? Yes. This is based on the Geico Caveman. Caveman is a sitcom that ran from October second to November thirteenth, two thousand seven, on ABC. It lasted thirteen episodes, with many being unaired in the USA. The series Good. was based on the Geico Caveman commercials and was intended by the network as a show that offers a clever twist on stereotypes and turns race relations on its head. What? Yeah. Race relations? Yes. What race are the cavemen supposed to be? Because I see nothing but white people here. Listen to this. Listen to this. The cavemen on the show face racial discrimination and are called magger and maggers by racists. You gotta be fucking joking <laughs> with me. Maggers? Yeah. Yep. Magger is a pun based on Cro-Magnon and, yeah. um, you know. <laughs> yeah. And something else. 
<laughs> the show faced backlash for being racist. And, no uh, the no home shit. Of <laughs> what? No. That's the worst premise I've... Okay, guys, listen. <laughs> Cavemen come back, right? And everything's cool at first. They get jobs, but then they start facing discrimination. They are the new blacks. The cavemen, you see. <laughs> The new blacks. <laughs> I never knew the show was about this. I, when I saw this show was being advertised, I thought it was about like the cavemen just getting into wacky hijinks or some shit. Like, that, that's what it say, make, seemed to make the most sense. Like they're just gonna have adventures, gonna be fish out of water wherever they go. So, they're gonna be uh, was this just rich... an excuse for them to be able to do racist jokes on TV that wouldn't have flown at the time? Like, uh, well, let's let's we'll go we'll get into that. I guess uh, we're gonna look at some stuff from it. We can determine that uh, the show did face backlash for being racist as a response. Initial response was the the location of the caveman's uh, home was changed from Atlanta, Georgia to San Diego, California. Like that's going to fix it or whatever. Um, so let's take a look at the commercials that inspired it. First of all, these are some of the Geico caveman commercials, which actually do uh, play to that discrimination angle as well. Yeah. So I can kind of see why they did the so easy a caveman so can easy do to it. use Geico.com. A caveman could do it. <laughs> what? Not cool. I did not no. know you were there. I didn't know I can change. Right, Geico. right, 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 right. Okay. So, I mean, like, to, okay, to be fair well. to the to be fair to the show, that that was the premise of the commercials as well. It right, is kind but of. But here's the difference. Here's the difference. Okay. Yeah. In the commercials, every time the caveman got offended, we can watch a few more. He he's always doing a job that it, it's never implied he's a black person. Right. They're never going like, oh, this would be a black person doing this job. Like, he's not sitting there, like, doing soft shoe and eating watermelon when he gets offended or whatever the fuck. <laughs> this could save you 15% more look. on car insurance. It's so easy to use Geico.com. A caveman could do it. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Do you hear that? That is really condescending. Geico. See? Okay. It's never implied that they're black people. You guys were still around. Yeah, next time maybe do a little research. Gentlemen, are we ready to order? I'll have the roast duck with the mango salsa. I don't have much of an appetite, thank you. Geico. <laughs> <laughs> These were good commercials back in the day. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you. I like, mean... I remember there's laughing. a reason why there's a reason why they thought they thought like ooh this is maybe like a sitcom material because people did love these fucking commercials right offensive if it's true okay first of all i'm not 100 percent in love with your tone right now tone aside historically you guys have struggled to adapt yeah right walking upright discovering fire inventing the wheel laying the foundation for all mankind you're right good point <laughs> sorry we couldn't get that to you sooner <laughs> connie your reaction sounds like someone woke up from the wrong side of the rock <laughs> i mean <laughs> you see what i mean i mean there's definitely a racial parable going on here. They're though. not. They're not. Be, but they're not calling them maggers. See, yeah, that's the problem. Is that the 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 sitcom obviously went way too far in that direction. Well, let's take like take a look. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the show is fucking funny. It, yeah. It seems like they have something that's good in these little vignettes, these little short short clips, basically commercial length. They probably just did not have it uh, uh, the ability to work it into a 20 minute show. Probably not. Let's just take a look at the intro. It all started with us, the cavemen. Since day one, our people have always been where the action is. Sure, maybe not front and center, but if you're enjoying your modern civilization, you might want to send us a little thank you now. We're not that hard to find. We're right here beside you. We're really not that different from you. Just a little better looking. So the intro is terrible. Yep. <coughs> It's not I guess as we, egregious. I actually, I actually don't have any uh, clips from it, so I guess we can't judge. What? It's not as egregious as the fucking other ones are in, like, exposition at the beginning, but it still is, like... TJ, dude, I'm disappointed, man. So you set, you set us up for this. I want to see the Caveman show. I thought I that I'd... I guess we don't have any clips from it. It must have been hard to find clips. Sorry. 
Uh, this accessible, TJ. Ten demerits from you. This is the Big Show show. We've already kind of looked at some stuff from this before because I was shocked that this existed. Um, the Big Show show is a sitcom that premiered on April 6, 2020 and ended with a Christmas special on December 9th, 2020. The show lasts only 10 episodes. Um, I'm kind of surprised. I, th- I thought this actually got picked up for another season, but maybe I'm wrong We took that. a. Didn't we look at this during a fucking we did. pre-post show uh, or some shit? Yeah, I believe we did. Uh, the show revolves around the fictionalized version of uh, WWE champion The Big Show and his hectic, wacky family life. Uh, his fellow pro wrestlers, Mick Foley, Rikishi, Mark Henry, also star on The Big Show as The Big Show's uh, friends. <sighs> anyway, here's the trailer for it. Uh, I think we already watched this trailer before. Aiden, like- yeah, we've seen this trailer. We already watched this. Well, I guess we can watch it again. Yeah, that's fine. this so much man the big show man no nah, man big show nah. what you doing big show your dad's the big show why you it's done did it big show wrestling, so i want to get in as much family time as i can you and the kids man this was reminding me that this is, exists tj i'd forgotten that the big show show was a thing well that's the thing about lame tv shows they're pretty easy to just completely forget about you know and That's I why to, you need a reminder. I hate to steal a bit, but it just, it's in my head. So I got to steal it from you, TJ, and ask Big Show, why you done what you done, Big Show? Why you done yeah. what you done, Big Show? <laughs> why? Wow, the Big Show's a family, man. You talking to me or the belt? You. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, let's watch some of the fucking Big Show show and get over this. Oh, so uh, what you're about to see is super cringe. Um, sorry. I don't know what to tell you. It's just, it's really bad. Hit it, boys. Uh, can I stop you right there? You're not sorry, TJ. You put this episode no, I, fucking I together. Actually, I actually am sorry because I'm going to uh, feel the pain. Wait a minute, well. wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you hit play, TJ. Yes. This could go a many different ways here from what I'm seeing in this first frame. Yes. This could be him about to sing a song. This could be the beginnings of a blacked video. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> or a Brazzers video or something, you know? Yeah, well, maybe cross your fingers and hope for that. Hit it, boys. You are <gasps> my fire. Never mind. My one desire when I say I want it that way. Mark Henry. It's our- Mark Henry. Mankind slash Mick Foley. And who's that other guy? Was that fucking uh, Samoa Joe? No, it's oh, Rikishi. Rikishi. Rikishi? Why the three of you done what you done now? <laughs> when the big show called you and said, Hey, will you come on my lame sitcom and sing? I want it that way. You oh, were politely they declined. Were of, they were part of the cast. They were like the recurring, his recurring friend no, characters in the show. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 yep. no, 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 no. Yep. 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 No, yep. No, 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 Well, let's s- end on that note. I sold the oh, my God. Oh, so there's a side plot in this episode where she's got a, a haunted house she's trying to sell. That's great to yeah. know. That really, uh, yeah. it, it, I'm really wanting to see what this is and how it turns out now. I just want Mark Henry and Rikishi and fucking Mankind to get to fucking lay down and stop pretending they can sing right I, now. So here's the thing. Here's the deal, guys. Here's the deal. I could play more of this. Or I can move on to the next thing. But choose wisely because the next thing is really bad. 
Okay. On the scale of this, this, of what we've seen so far, where do you place the next thing? So, the next thing has the added shit bonus of shitting on something that I think we all love. Yeah, let's move on, dude. I'll, I'll, like, I'd rather get mad at a show. Like, this just makes me like really disappointed and sad. Because yeah, I'm sad seeing, like, to see these like great performers doing yeah. some like hacking. Well, I think you're gonna shit. find the next one. I, I think you're gonna find the next one pretty sad too. Oh man. Oh uh, fuck, dude. Man, you're such a piece of shit. Man, you dude. are a fuck fucking episode, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it too, guys. <laughs> you fucking right, well, little fucking hyena. Sorry, you next thing, I guess. Toad, TJ. All right, I'm just going to warn you, steal yourselves. Steal yourselves. You know, dude, I'm going to be like the reed. I'm going to bend, TJ. No, 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 nope, 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 nope. Let me tell you something, TJ. This little Photoshop that you've thrown together here is real cute, TJ. This is real fucking cute. That is not the guy from the failed-ass fucking Friday movies that when they started to suck. That's uh, What's his name? Mark Epps? Mike Epps? That's not Mike Epps. Yeah. That's not Mike, that Epps. Mike Epps. And they yeah. didn't pick Mike Epps. No, 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 no. Wait, TJ. Good one, TJ. This is Photoshop, dude. Good one. Photoshop. On to the next Photoshop. actual Photoshop. show, TJ. Photoshop. Photoshop. Nice try, TJ. Photoshop, dude. Good one. Well, let's just go. Let's just maintain the kayfabe for a second. Uh, Uncle Buck All is right. a 2016 TV series uh, based on the 1989 film of the same name starring John Candy. The okay. series lasted on ABC from June 14th, 2016 to August 2nd, 2016, and had only eight episodes. The Russell family returns with Uncle Buck, Tia, Miles, Maisie, etc. But this time, they're black. Da, 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 da. See, the thing that kills okay, this so. is not that the guy that they recast is black. It's that the guy that they recast is Mike Epps. Here's them recreating the iconic photo uh, without... <laughs> this is just so bad. Like, why without are they all smiling? Without any passion or skill or frame this of is, reference or... Oh, my God. Passion, dude. That's all it Mike is. Mike Epps so looks... Bad. Like, why do they all look like they're posing at an awkward, like, Walmart family photo shoot? Why? They do. It, like, the whole point is that the family is supposed to be, like, blocking the door. Like, this they all look like... like this looks like it came from some kind of awesome non-existent theme park where, uh, like, there was an Uncle Buck land, and this is like a picture opportunity that a family took <laughs> at yeah. Uncle Buck land, and they paid $25 for a printout of. It's that quality, too. It actually looks like it was taken on a Polaroid camera, which I really don't understand what was going on with this. I really don't understand the thought process behind doing something like this. Like, why do something like this? Here's the official Uncle Buck trailer. Oh. We need someone to watch the kids. Any chance you're free? You'll love to have me here. I'm lots of fun. Who want to see me jump off the balcony in the pool? Oh, damn. I love taking care of them kids, and I do it well. Yeah. Mom, a prostitute taught me to twerk. There is no way he's got this. Look what I got Macy to do. I'm a prize. Oh, hell no. It's way harder than I thought it would be. What are you hitting me for? You're not the police. And the wonderful lessons continue. So uh, what if you had another bolt, another gun up here that someone else had, you know, and then all three bullets met in the middle and your Dude. face just kind of explodes outward? What if you can open your mouth really wide, TJ, right? You can get like your whole fist up in that motherfucker, right? Yeah. So what if you just pulled the pin on a grenade and just. Oh, yeah. Just shoved it right in my fucking mouth and just pulled the pin. Yeah. Yeah, that'd do it. That'd do that'd it. That'd fucking yeah. That'd fucking do it. How would you make the bullet end with coming out the top of your head? Mm. You would have to start here, right? If you had to start here, bing bing, bing, bing. and then you ha you could fire another bullet like that, Bobby. right? And then you'd uh -huh. have to do another one like this at the same time. And if you did that Ooh. at the with the right timing, bing 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 bing. bing. Dude, we need it some, like, we need with the bullet ricocheting out top. 
we need I'm, I'm gonna go back and watch the saw movies get some inspiration some jigsaw type yeah. like how can i destroy my like ability to perceive reality as efficiently as possible and as totally as possible well so there are I'm drugs gonna go for that movies. you know there are drugs i can recommend uh, a few like, chemical compounds you could do like a laser helmet thing with like charges all throughout the helmet that when you upon seeing a show like Uncle Buck, it just triggers the device and take a look at a take a look at a fucking hot Uncle Buck clip, huh? Oh great, hood tails. I love hood tails. Hood tails. There once was a lady that lived in the shoe. She had so many baby daddies, she didn't know what to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. All them baby daddies. Little soft shoe for America. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at me. Do, uh, oh, boy. It's the minstrel show continues. Yeah. Uh, yeah we here at Disney really need to appeal to that, uh, the, uh, the darky uh, black demographic. Uh, yeah, Uncle Buck is black now and it's like in the hood or something. I don't know. The, the black family is respectable and he's from the hood. A show fucking writes itself. They're getting a bunch of wacky hijinks. Yeah, we never stopped doing blackface. We just convinced black people to start doing it. <laughs> awesome. With money. Uh, this is a show called First Impressions. It's from 1988. <laughs> the dude, okay. Now, can I yeah. just say something before you go on? Uh -huh. If you had told me this is a picture of a man who killed his entire fucking family. I would yeah. be able to pick out not only the dude what done it, and I think you would too. One? Is it the bald guy? Why wouldn't it be? Look at him. Yeah, yeah. He looks criminally insane. So does his daughter. So does the young daughter. She looks criminally insane too. If you told me this is a horror movie about a daddy-daughter uh, serial killer squad, I would believe it. But it's uh, not, is it? So it stars Brad Garrett, known for his roles in Everybody Loves Raymond, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Roll come Wrestling. Come on, and Raymond. Use the grape, Raymond. Come on. Mm -hmm. Think before you make the bad decision, Raymond. Give me my paycheck. Thank you. See you, ne see you next series, episode. Uh, the series aired on CBS from uh, August 27th, 1988 to October 1st, 1988. Eight episodes were produced. Only five were aired. Frank Dutton, Brad Garrett, is the owner of an advertising agency in Omaha, Nebraska, who does impressions to sell commercials. Frank's social life as a divorcee who is starting to date again in his relationship with his nine-year-old daughter, Lindsay, is explored. Wow, sounds really boring. Wait a minute, what? Read that last part again? He's starting to get, date again and his daughter, Lindsay, is explored? <laughs> well, you know, that? It's can, can you see, it's read that last sentence again? It says his relationship with his nine-year-old daughter, Lindsay, is explored, Paul. You dirty-minded son of a bitch. I didn't say, <laughs> dude, I didn't fucking say shit. I, I don't just know, fucking... Paul. I was here, man. I don't know, dude. Check it out. First impressions. Opening credits. Remember earlier when we said the 80s well, had some good I gotta tell you. <laughs> the first impression of this is terrible. <laughs> exactly. It's like, how did they not know that the first impression was going to be horrible of this. This is horrible. This is worse right, wanna... than my mom the car. All right, hold on. So imagine you just you turn on a TV sh uh, channel. You're flipping through channels. You land on this one. Yeah. This is what plays. How long is it? Tell me the moment you change the fucking channel. Okay. Right there. Right yep. there. Do you see that moment? Right there like, is the, no. as the name of the show comes on, and I realize the irony that it's making a horrible first impression on me. I'm going to change the channel. Eh. <laughs> no. Did they get a drunk hobo to sing the intro song to this? Like, are you going to listen to this shit? Just say. Did he just say we're in Omaha? Don't tell the Kaiser. Is, what was is, that? Is it Randy Newman all liquored up again? Who's doing this? I don't know, hold on, hold on. Let me hear that again. We're in Omaha. We're in advertising. We're in Omaha. We're in advertising. We're in Omaha. We're in advertising. 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 We're
Dude, I'm convinced that some executive somewhere is like, dude, let's make the worst sitcom ever with a terrible intro, but call it First Impressions. It's going to be fucking so funny. What, what, the, balloons, what the fuck? Dude. We'll get we'll get a fucking retarded drunk to sing it. We'll get like... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, like, it, it sounds like they went outside and grabbed like a fucking drug addict off the street and paid him like fucking twenty five dollars worth of smack to read or sing this song however he wanted, and then they just put music behind it. Like it's horrible. What is the rest of the, let's hear it? <laughs> Robin down, get down, son. <laughs> Pizza and tires, shoes too. Anything you see, just watch this shit too. What's the shit? No, you're not. You're not showing me what you're I wanted. You're showing me nothing. You're showing me the In fucking opposite of what I wanted to see, man. <laughs> Need to be guillotined. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Commercials are guaranteed? I guess. So you're going to remind me at the end of your song that commercials are coming? Yeah. yeah good way yeah. to get me to tune out of your show, dipshits. Great Can I say first about impression. This? It has it's a, a show yeah. that's every five minutes or five to six minutes or however long is going to be interrupted by commercials. And the entire premise of the show is they're making really bad commercials. So I think they just knew. One. I think they just knew that anyone watching this show would probably be looking forward to the commercials. You've got low standards. You don't know what to watch. Here you go. It's first impression. It's like, it's like, it's like this is what it is. You want to tell people sometimes like, can you guys imagine ever going back to that? How and, and can you even imagine how you got yourself into the headspace that that was normalized back as a kid? Because I remember watching, you know, like I know we all all watched TNG when it was on. Yeah. Um, and it if you watch it now, if you binge it on Netflix or whatever, it has these weird like, da -na 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 -na, you know, like pauses in the action where it picks right up where it left off. Th that used to be filled with like a minute and a half of fucking commercials for cars and chips and shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it used to be unskippable unless you fucking had a VCR and you taped everything and fast forwarded through the goddamn commercials, which m most people didn't do. Like you'd, you'd sit and you'd just watch it. You'd watch commercials. You'd watch movies that would come out on TV that were cut with commercial breaks in them, just like a TV show. Like, yeah, that was horrible, dude. That was so horrible. Like, life was terrible back then, dude. I remember as a kid that that would you, that would suck so bad. You're watching a movie and it's like, what's gonna happen? To commercial, we'll be right back. And you have to fucking watch two or three minutes of commercials. Then they get back to the movie. It also sucked when movies edited shit out where it's like, you piece of shit, and it'd be like, you piece of crap. Once I even called him Airhead. They have like the dub over. Oh my god, the bad dubbing. But even with TV shows, like I remember how bad it used to suck when the new episode of fucking TNG would come out. I'd be sitting there with my best friend, and it would just get into something cool, and then it would. Da -da 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 -da. And then all of a sudden, I'm watching a fucking Toyota Corolla commercial or some shit for three minutes, and it just like, ugh. ugh. Thank goodness for, like, being able to binge TV shows and them slapping them all together and getting rid of that fucking bullshit. So, T, did you have a clip of first impressions for us? Are you going to fail to deliver again? Well, here's fail the, to deliver this again, is the, TJ. This is the premiere commercial. I don't have any clips. I have this commercial. All right. You're going to flip for first impressions. Now, you see, I love first impressions. How can I keep the sweater? Hey, first impression, you know? Something funny if you're looking for a little comedic respect. First impressions can be deceived. First impression. Um, this was never going to work. This was never going to fucking work. The fact that your fucking, like, logo for your show looks like it was drawn with crayon says everything. It looks... 
fucking low rent and really bad, and there were some really hackneyed impressions of some actually funny people in there. I don't get no respect. You know, I don't get no respect. Eh? It's not really Rodney Dangerfield. It's me. Oh, shit. No shit it was not really Rodney Dangerfield, you dumb fuck. Yeah, some of that, like, quit imitating people with actual talent. <laughs> that, that's yeah. a real problem. Just imitate dog shit like yourself, and you'll is, be fine. Is this is this show like some kind of big brain meta commentary on itself? Are we I, being that's what duped? I was <laughs> like, that's what I think. I think this might be like some bored execs that were really smart going like, let's make a show where it appears that we think we're making a bad first impression, but that that's the point of the show is that first impressions can be deceiving. But the real point of the show behind the scenes is that, no, like you should have never tuned into this. It's horrible. And we're going to make <laughs> everything about it horrible. You know what I mean? And just troll these fucking dupes out there in fucking TV land that are just kind of like slavishly watching and whatever we throw at them. <laughs> that's way, I think that goes way too deep into the like, maybe that's the actual reason they're doing it. I am uh, I'm I'm happy to be the cell products. I am happy to be the first down vote on this video. Well, like it deserves way more. So go find I this video. Up your and... down vote. Yeah. Don't I can't tell you to go downvote it because that would be vote brigading. But uh, you know, go go. Le hey, what? Go with your first impression. Yeah, just go with your first impression. Does it work? Yeah. Uh, this is um, what is this? Is this another promo for it? Oh God. Okay. Hey. All right, man. This is Hulk Hogan, man. Ow. Well, I know Pilgrim. Wait, what? Was so that supposed this to sound like show is wait, 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 wait. It's an impressionist it's show. Impression? Right, that's the pun. Yeah, but he first can't. But it, I didn't get it though. No, 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 no. See, here's the thing. He is. He's not doing a good impression of any of these people. He's not a good impressionist. Dude, listen to this fucking John Wayne. It sounds nothing like John Wayne. Well, I know Pilgrim. That doesn't sound like John Wayne. Well, well, I, I know Pilgrim. Pilgrim. Hey, it's me, John Wayne. Yeah, it's a hack. So he's a hack impressionist. That's the whole idea of the show. I guess. Hey guys, it's me, John Wayne. Oh, hold on, I want to see what other impressions right. he does here. Who was that even? That was Bill Cosby. So it's oh, bad no. impressions, and then him exploiting the right. with his nine-year-old daughter. Would there be a way to, for me to get a high enough caliber gun and get like ref, like like that? It would go off with such force that it would reflect off of something and go back into my head and go through again before you know what I mean? I don't know. If I put like plate steel over there, could I get one shot to come back and go through again? The Broadway giant Wait, comes to TV, Paul. You could make that happen. Sick. Yes, with the Broadway giant to come to TV, Mickey Rooney stars as one of the boys. When Did Mickey it? becomes his grandson's new is roommate. Is that Studs Terkel? Just... That um, is Studs Terkel. That's the fucking Shining guy. Mm, yeah, maybe. That's uh, the guy. Yeah, it is. That's the kid. When that's Mickey the, becomes uh, his grandson's new roommate, he just wants to be one of the boys, especially when it comes to the girls. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Also starring Dana Carvey, Nathan Lane, and Scatman Crothers. Wow, I actually Scat know all these people. Yep. Scatman. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't know. It is him. Because he is. was in um, fucking One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, too, right? He's like the security guard. Mm hmm. I guess. I don't know. Uh, one of the boys is a sitcom that aired on NBC from January 23rd to April 24th, 1982. It lasted only one season, had 13 episodes. Shocking. So the premise of the series is that Oliver Nugent, played by Mickey Rooney, and his friends uh, Bernard Solomons, who's played by Scatman Crothers, leave the nursing home and move in with Oliver's college-age grandson, Adam Shields, played by Dana Carvey, who is attending Sheffield College in New Jersey. The show also, also features Adam's other roommate, Jonathan Burns, played by Nathan Lane, Adam's girlfriend, Jane, played by Meg Ryan, and the landlady, Mrs. Um, Green, played by Frances Beers. A lot of big names in this show, but apparently it sucked fucking balls. Here's a intro for it.
I'm sure this show was retired shortly after it, it premiered. I mean, I told you it lasted 13 episodes. I told you exactly how long it ran, a few that's months. What that's what I'm saying. I mean, like, but yeah, it, it's clear why. It's one of those premises where it's like, we have a ridiculous premise. Okay, what else do you have? I mean, I don't Not know. Even... Maybe, maybe it's good as a play. I mean, the idea of an old man, you know, coming out of the nursing home to live with his young grandsons or whatever the fuck is, you know, it, it could be the premise of a fucking play or some shit, but I don't know how you make it a show. Well, here's how you do it. Check it out. I think I might have seen this show before. Is this a gay porno or is this a show? Uh, both. I don't know. Cool. I mean, is Dana, is Dana Carvey going to start sucking Nathan Lane's cock? I mean, it kind of looks like it. Yeah, He's I mean, dancing towards kinda, him. Kind of getting that vibe. Oh, it's just like his dick. Come on, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Hi, neighbor. Can you say grumpy? Well, Dana Carvey went on to do that a bunch more times and get a bunch of laughs with it, so. Sure, you can. You're bugging me, Mr. Rogers. Ring. What do I feel like we've watched this before? We, we have. When I don't remember watch this. It. Did we do an episode on Dana Carvey or some shit? I think we did. Like a, I think we saw this in a compilation for like eighties or like TV shows or something. I, I'm a, I'm almost unless I'm experiencing profound deja vu. I feel like we have watched this. I, I do like not recall have. ever watching this before. So maybe you guys did it without no. me. I, I do remember watching it. I think we covered it with Dana Carvey. I think we did an episode with Dana Carvey. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah, I think I think this was pulled. Okay. Oh no. Bald-headed dude can't come to the phone either. <laughs> well, why don't you just leave a, a message when you when you hear the little beep? It's gonna sound like this. <laughs> so just the show that revolves around Dana Carvey being able to do these impressions. Okay. Dana, um, Dana Carvey um, has the same haircut that I had when I was five years old in this. No. It's pretty cool. No. No. All right. I'm going to skip to the middle. Let's see what's happening there. Uh, see how Scatman Crothers does in this. That do not sound like no hard to sell. End of yours. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jimmy Stewart. It's another Jimmy Stewart hack impression. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> yeah. Okay, seen it. Let me Great. tell you what my impression is. God, no. There's Jimmy Stewart. Shut up. You're done. You're done. You're done. All right, can the we go back me. and watch fucking Dana Carvey do Jimmy Stewart impressions until the end of time and not even speak about whatever the hideous fucking PJ, thing is the on the fuck, screen dude? here? What? You found this shit, dude? Grimace the looks like he wants to... Trigger Grimace warning, but rape Grimace my asshole. Fuck, dude. He, he looks, looks like he's me. sizing me up to take, <laughs> drag me away and fuck my butthole until I die from it. <laughs> I know, dude. Everyone <laughs> else looks like happy and that Grimace is just in the background. Like Grimace is me. staring <laughs> at me with this lustful look that just tells me as soon as I get the opportunity, I'm going to grab you, drag you away, and fuck you till you're dead. What <laughs> is, why would this ever be released? What is that hideous abomination on the left, too? Was this a show or was that that fucking horrible movie Stevie made us watch a million times as a kid? What is that on the left? Because I remember Stevie watching Is that watching a plucked over turkey over come to life on the left? Is that, play, is that Diogenes' man? Dressed in a fucking military shirt? <laughs> Diogenes' man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Diogenes' man dressed in a fucking 
military vest over there. What the fuck is this show? Did somebody have a bad acid trip? Why does, why does, why does Ronald McDonald look like a rave kid? Why is one of the this guys from Ed, Ed and Eddie here? This is appealed to kids in, from like Stevie's generation, dude. Because Stevie, I'm not sure if this was a show or whatever, but I remember he got this on VHS. Like he got like an episode oh, of this. Or the fuck was. I can tell you, that. I can tell what's going I can't, on. Okay, I can't, I can't have deal? fucking Grimace looking at me like this. I hope there's some other clip. I can't have him stare at me like. like oh, I'm looking right at you. Nope. Blocked. You, Paul. you can't see shit, bitch. I can't <laughs> see you. Paul. You can't see me, Grimace. I'm gonna see you real soon, Paul. Oh, uh, go away, Grimace. Sleep with Stop. Open, Paul. Wacky. No means no. The, the, the wacky, the wacky adventures of Ronald McDonald. The wacky adventures of Ronald McDonald is an animated Paul. series produced by McDonald. Ah! The show's intention was to introduce slash familiarize kids with the various McDonald's mascots and to associate the brand with friends, family, and fun. The series lasted from October 9th, 1988 to January 30th, 2003, with six 40-minute episodes being produced. The series was released on VHS tapes that were sold at various McDonald's locations and gift shop partners across the country. So this did not air on television. These were like okay. specially produced animations that were made by McDonald's and then were sold uh, in McDonald's stores or in other locations. The show revolves around Ronald McDonald and his friends, including Grimace, who wants to rape Paul, the hamburger. Shut up. I don't want to look at him anymore. And you're you, now you're triggering me, TJ. Oh, you're right. Birdie, me, Paul. Birdie the you're early bird, and Mayor McCheese as they go on adventures throughout McDonald Land. I like it. Each episode opened and closed with a live action segment. You're going to like it, Paul. No. Adventures of Ronald McDonald. Hey kids, did you hear the news? Time to put on your adventure shoes. Get ready for some big surprises. Adventures come in lots of sizes. We'll have fun, be outrageous. Wackiness is sure contagious. Come on, Hamburg with Bertie Grimace too. I want you all with me, and that includes you. On the way to play. On the run for fun. Going miles for smiles. Come on, everyone. We never know, no, 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 what's around the bend. But we just can't wait. Adventures are great with all our friends. Let me hear you. Come on. So uh, when they made... Look at this fucking screen cap here. <laughs> it's Pennywise, dude. It's like a Pennywise. It's like just fucking with you. That's some creepy pasta shit. And then he paused it. And... Don, Ronald McDonald's face seemed to change. Instead of two eyes, he had four, and his lips were hideous, grotesque, beckoning almost. Everybody, the wacky adventures of Ronald McDonald. Yeah. So, so uh, whoever, whoever shit. made, uh, whoever made it. Uh, the It movies, they should have drawn some inspiration from this because this is way more terrifying mm -hmm. than uh, that Skarsgård interpretation of Pennywise. Whoever was responsible for this was on some like major fucking drugs. Major, major drugs. How about this though? Funkmaster Flex? Homeboys in Outer Space? Serious okay. Premier. I'll check it out. This sounds uh, st stupid. Homeboys in Outer Space was a science fiction sitcom that aired from August 27th, 1996 to May 13th, 1997 on UPN. Lasted one season. Did have 21 episodes. Uh, so the series is um, centered around Tiberius Ty Walker and Morris Clay who travel around the universe in the Space Hoopty. A cross Is that between Mike a low Epps again? I don't think so, but maybe. Uh, a cross between a low rider and an 18-wheeler, which was piloted by a talking female computer named Loquisha. Here's the, here's the intro. Yeah, they'll love it. The homeboys are out of space. They're going to love this show. Look, they're going to be like they're from the hood, but they're in space. People will love it. 
Space, y'all. The final fucking bullshit. We out here. <laughs> Space right. was hot back then, dude. You spaceships, all right. Man, what was... What was this, like, cultural fas fascination with, like, getting a window in on black people who are just, like, horribly poor and can't afford to be doing what they're doing, but doing it anyway? Mm. The space hoopty, and then they got, like, a busted old couch and shit. How, yeah. Why can't the homeboys in outer space ride in a fucking gangster-ass fucking gangster mobile? Why do they have to be broke homeboys in outer space? You know what I mean? Mm. Just the man. It just goes to show you, man. The man is fucking holding every. The, the man is holding everybody down, including Ask the black totally man. Questions, Paul. They're black and they're in space. That's all you need to know. Listen, we 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 have them. We have them up in space, right? And then they realize, like, oh no, there's no fried chicken up here. And so in one episode, they go looking for a for a planet that's got some chicken on it. Now, the next episode is they can't find a grape drink, so they got to look around with grape drink They're for the whole episode. They're thirsty after they eat the chicken in episode two, and so they got to find some And then in the, uh, the, season, in the season finale, his, their baby mamas are coming after them for child support, so they got to go to the fucking... <laughs> I don't even know. Man. They got to go beyond the edges of the universe to escape their fucking legion of baby mamas that are coming and after them for child support. And then they go to the fucking... Support. They are able to hide out in the welfare nebula until, uh, you know. <laughs> like, what the fuck, dude? This is fucking horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at, one, at one point, they drive to planet uh, planet upscale, you know, and, and, and hold up some white aliens. Uh, they carjack some white aliens and get into some hijinks trying to get away on that planet. You know what I mean? And then you wonder why the fucking target gets burned down, you fucking... <laughs> whatever. Okay, uh, so are you guys ready for the final... Uh, oh, well, well, I guess we could look around. This is the first episode of Homeboys from Outer Space. Give me a minute, Marker. Who's, uh, who's feeling brave? Scotty, you, you, you go ahead and choose. I don't want to choose this. Right there. I feel like that. Go, yeah, go back to there. Yeah, uh, a little bit. Yeah, right there. Here? Yeah, right there. Right there. Okay. Shit. <laughs> And you will never get past the first checkpoint. Is that so? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. But I bet that at this very moment, my intelligent Morris is coming up with a brilliant plan to get the hoopty back. <laughs> Like I said earlier, uh -oh. we never stopped doing the minstrel shows. We just started paying black people to do them. Yeah, I don't know where that old husband of mine is. I is show sure he is going to come up with some stuff and get that damn hoopty back, y'all. Maybe. Burp. Meanwhile, in the in the liquor store nebula, <laughs> yo yo yo, what up, y'all? Time for me to clear the block out with my laser gat. Bloop, bloop, bloop. 
So you guys ready for the final show? Is the next one? They used to be blacks, then they reverted. Now they're chimps and they're fucking retarded. You know, like, is it going to be just like... <laughs> they're blacks and they're chimps. You know, like, how much worse can it fucking get? You can't capstone it with homeboys in space and not have something worse to follow it. I don't know, dude. I don't know how you can top homeboys in space, but maybe you can. Go for it, TJ. I'm ready. Hit me with everything you got. Full in the face with it. I'm ready. Unleash the beast. Come on. Fuck you, TJ. Just do it, man. Hit me with it. Hit me with it. Come on. He's, making, it he's making you wait. He's I'm ready. You wait. I got my bread like, basket steeled up. I'm ready to take the hit. You're at the fucking firing squad, Paul. And it's like, aim. Come on. Get it over with now. End my suffering. Yep, Let's go. Just go ahead and pull the trigger. <clears throat> Gentlemen. You're a monster, dude. TJ, not him. Not him. TJ, you have no fucking right to drag this out of our fucking past, TJ. You know, as well as I know, that this person here is better dead and buried to the internet and the world at large. There is no Fred anymore, TJ. And to bring him back from 2007 and 2008, screaming back into the consciousness of people who have never heard of him, TJ, this is irresponsible. Fred the Show was a comedy series that aired on Nickelodeon from January 16th to August 3rd, 2012. The series was canceled after one season and 24 episodes due to low ratings and poor critic reviews. No, no shit. shit. <laughs> yeah, like, who, who the, the fuck show? wanted more Fred? At this time, no one wanted more Fred unless you're, like, fucking eight or something, dude. No one was like, more Fred! Please, more Fred! I mean, it was oh, on Nickelodeon, God, so it's, it, it seems like even fucking eight-year-olds didn't want more of him because this was on fucking Nickelodeon. That's the eight-year-olds network, so... They didn't the show. The show followed the okay. adventures of Fred Figglehorn, a 16-year-old boy who has crazy schemes and goes on wild adventures. No, he doesn't, and no, he isn't. So a show with literally no ideas behind it. Like, <laughs> literally, like, just put random shit in blenders. Like, did, did they think Fred had something? Did they really feel like when they, they relit the show that there was actually more to Fred that, <laughs> beneath the surface? Like, beneath the surface of Fred, like, there was nothing. It's a fucking goddamn paper tiger. There's nothing that exists underneath it. It's an annoying it's character, executives. and that's all it is. Desperate it executives is. want to make some money. They don't give a fuck that I'm not even funny. La, 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 You hated Fred back in the day. You even made that parody video about Fred. Yeah, TJ did try to hop on the Fred train. Do the figgle wiggle, you guys. Nightmare. Do the figgle wiggle. It's so good. Man. It's so wonderful. I don't want to live on this planet no more. Hey, fuck you, man. God, <laughs> it's fucking horrible human being. Dude. And Scotty. Do the wiggle, wiggle. Do the wiggle, wiggle. Do the wiggle, wiggle. Oh, it's not enough that I just have one angle on this shit. I got to have fucking nine. My mom says I drive her insane. I've got a hundred. No shit. Your mom just strangled you, dude. Your mom should got a fucking abortion, Fred. Whoever the fuck in a goddamn was going to have Fred. Now, I know why Fred's mom fucking hated him so much. Fucking Fred's mom was a fucking saint.
Because after Fred fucking started acting like this, she should have been like, fucking, I don't know, like 128th week abortion. This um this show, by the way, caused childhood ADHD and childhood uh, cancers of all forms. I'm just letting you know. It's been proven. Kids didn't used to get cancer before this show came out on Nickelodeon, and then that's when that started. Yeah, this show is carcinogenic, if you're wondering. You actually, we're actually exposing the audience to danger right now. Yeah, it if there's any kids on watching. And on and on and on and on. Yeah, it's, uh, this is, a, this, I remember this dude back in the day, and, and I probably checked on him every once in a while for the same reason TJ did. I would look at my video and I'd be like, oh, dude, I got like 2,000 views. Cool. And then I'd go look at Fred's latest video and it would have like 50,000 views. And I'd be like, fuck. I can't. Yeah, there's, no, Fred. there's no fucking way. Here's some of the show. I didn't order a Buffs for Brains pizza. Now, Kevin, is that any way to talk to your B? To the F? To the F? Are you serious? Are you serious? Are you five years old, dude. We were never friends. I'm in my creative. It's fucking revolting, right dude. I'm like on fire. Makes you I'm crazy like, just, just to look at this. Hits. So get off my property and get off my back, bro. Kevin, look how happy we were together. It was so dude, funny. Fred totally wants to fuck Kevin. Time made us partners. BFF destiny. Kevin, I'm just so excited. I want to show every. Why they did this persistent, nasally, screechy, fucking pitch-shifted voice thing and kept that. Why they hired this kid to do anything, I don't, I'll never know. He had a movie, too. Yeah. He had more he than did. one movie. He had, like, two or three movies. Yep. Is it and, Fred uh, Big again? No. Is he? Did I, what? I, I think Fred did make a comeback. I'm not no, sure no, no, as, no, as no. a character as that. a Fred. But I, th I do think that Fred had something of a resurgence. Not maybe not the show. Don't tell me but that. But I do remember people talking about uh, him doing some stuff after this. Like, so I don't know. I don't want to hear that, dude. That can't be true. I'm looking I don't it up. About this shit, man. Man, what please, please no. What? Let's see. He's what? still active. I'll see his social media. I mean, he's got like 400,000 followers on Instagram and stuff. I mean, okay, I mean, so he's pretty has, fucking good on Instagram. I mean, I'm I'm not he's better than us. So, okay, so he has a he has a show. He just does like basically more like standard normal YouTube videos now. He has a channel called Lucas. He gets like pretty good views, like 200,000 views, 300,000 views. So, yeah, he's doing pretty well. Hold on, let's yeah, take a look. No. Let's see if let's see if it's cringe. Let's see if it's, it's cringe. We though. can't watch it because I don't want to get claimed by Fred. We ain't going to get claimed by shit. You're going to get claimed, claimed by, Fred, by Fred. Hashtag claimed by Fred. We ain't dude. getting claimed for shit. We're, just, we fucking, we're taking a look. We're taking a look. See how he does. See what's going on nowadays. You own by Fred. We helping hey, him out. It's Lucas. Welcome back to the Chan Chan. So. I still, I still dude, feel a lot of Fred right? vibes here. This is just like a sub, more subdued Fred. Right. So it's just new generation. Up. It's, it's like Fred's now it's 20. Up, it's like, hey, wait, I need to pull back a little bit on this Fred shit. But you can still tell it's very much that Fred style shit, honestly, even just from those first well, like, it, it, seconds. Let's a little bit further in so I can see him actually doing the show. This is just okay. like, hey, buy this Exciting product. New social commerce platform. So there's him chilling. Oh, just yeah, you're chilling. Flossy has three children. You have 12... Okay. No answer, homie. She has lived in multiple. So he's places, doing reaction videos, uh, in the basically. Northwest, even lived in Arizona. Tell me, you guys caught that flossy shade? The effortful smashing of her eyelids as the reporters talk. Okay, I, like, I know what kind out. of style video he's doing. I'm really yeah. hoping for some German. Well, I he's hate doing, it, but you know, reaction hey, videos. Whatever. It's not as horrible as Fred, I guess. Good for him. No. Blah blah blah. So that's the worst. Uh, well, not necessarily the worst TV shows of all time, but definitely the lamest. Yeah. Well, I'm defeated. I'm disheartened. I'm dismayed. I'm uh, bewildered. I'm uh, so, oh, about to be butt just... fucked by Grimace, apparently. Um, let me ask you this. I'm not asking which one's the worst show, but I am asking which show was the lamest. 
the lamest overall. I can go back over it. Uh, go go back over the titles really quick if you want to fucking. Yeah, quick yeah. Give us the titles of everything. Rock. So there was Cop Rock. Animal. There was the ugliest girl in town. Yep, no. There was Manimal. There was the secret diary of Desmond Puh Pfeiffer. <laughs> the mother, my mother, the car, the flying nun, cavemen, the big show show, Uncle Buck, first impressions, one of the boys, the wacky adventures of Ronald McDonald, homeboys in outer space, and Fred the show. I'll tell you what, dude, for me, the only show that you said that just truly I felt like there was nothing to it, like I, I can't think of anything redeeming about it at all. God, that's fucking tough. Uncle Buck. I'm trying to get, I mean, Uncle Buck, yeah, that's really bad. The fact that they just like, they took the concept for Uncle know. Buck and just threw Mike Epps in it and, made, and like shit all over it, that sucked a whole lot because Uncle Buck's great. So fuck that and fuck the uh, whatever that hideous adventures of Ronald the rapist or whatever that was. <laughs> My favorite one, Paul. How about you, Scotty? What do you think is the worst? God, just go over it one more time, dude. I'm the, I'm the, the lamest the couple. Okay, so the lamest. Just think about which one. Think about how lame each of these were. Uh, Cop Rock. Uh, okay. Guy. Really bad. The ugliest girl in town. No. Manimal. The Secret Diary of Desmond Pfeiffer. Uh, My Mother the Car. Um, the Flying Nun. No, no, no. Cavemen. The Big Show Show. Uncle Buck. First Impressions. One of the Boys. First Impressions. Homeboys in Outer Space. And Fred the Show. Dude, I'm telling you, first impressions, like, it's Fred is close, but first impressions, like, that's just the show that I felt like nothing but just disdain. I, uh, I have to say that I agree with you, because if I had the choice of watching any of these shows, like, that would be the last one I'd ever want to watch. So. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just a bunch of hack that. impressions. I swear to God, I would sit and watch fucking Ray's brother from the sitcom sit and do hack impressions, and from now until the end of eternity, to never have to see that bleary-eyed... <laughs> rapey grimace ever again that show there is nightmare fuel on acid <laughs> it's <laughs> the more i looked at that picture cool. the deeper my cool, existential despair got it's like fucking ronald mcdonald the rave kid rapey grimace there was a plucked chicken that was running around in a in a vest or <laughs> there was a deformed dog that we didn't even talk about like, it was absurdly deformed dog, like just a horribly <laughs> putridly deformed dog. That was just, that was some kind of creepypasta shit. It was, it, when you paused it, did fucking Ronald not look like a demon from hell? He definitely did. Remember when his eyes, when he had four eyes and his mouth turned into a big suckling maw or whatever the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, go ahead, TJ. Make light of it now. And then when you get the news that I was fucking strangled... And repeatedly assaulted until dead by a grimace. It's going to be a real funny uh, meme, TJ. Look oh, at how he's looking a lot at of me. People, a lot of people think I don't have a dick. What they don't realize is my whole body is just one big dick head. Oh, and no. every inch of it is going in your fucking ass, Paul. Every you can't inch make of threats it. like that. <laughs> it's actually illegal for you to make threats like that, Grimace. And if, you'll stop, if you could stop with your male gaze, I'd appreciate it. It's, it's really unnerving. Oh, I love male gaze. I'm gonna turn I didn't you mean into it like that. I meant the way you're staring at me. Bitch. You're a little. You're gonna be my little muffin, aren't you? Aren't you, Paul? You're gonna be my was, little fuck muffin, aren't you? I'm no, no. I'm nobody's fuck muffin. I'm gonna cream pie that big fat fucking ass, Paul Zigo. That's right. Prepare yourself. What am I talking about? Nothing could possibly prepare you for what's coming. Me. <laughs> oh, God. You know what? Grimace, what? you're kind of fucking talking me into this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, dude. <laughs> I've changed the way I feel about you over the last five seconds, Mr. Grimace, and I, I accept your proposal. All right. Well, Come that's the down. end of the episode. Bye, everybody.